available in India and now dissect the various data that is there. What we have in India today is that we have lixisanatide, whoever is using that now, oral semaglutide, liraglutide, and dulaglutide. That is all that we have. Now let's look at it from a perspective of what I will give myself. I don't have established cardiovascular disease. If I'm doing a clinic, any diabetes specialist who is doing a clinic, everyday clinic, his bulk of patients do not have established cardiovascular disease. His bulk of patients, out of which around 20% roughly would have established cardiovascular disease. Not going to have every patient who is walking the door have cardiovascular disease. So let's look at what was, if you have established cardiovascular disease and you're giving medication, that is secondary prevention. If you don't have established cardiovascular disease and you've got high risk factors, you're trying to prevent an event. So that's primary prevention. So let's look at the data that has been there. So I'm just gonna concentrate on the things that is only available in India. With leader, the higher proportionate of patients had established cardiovascular disease, which was 72.4%. With sustained six, but that's not available in India. Let's come to rewind or dulaglutide. Only 30% had established cardiovascular disease. Close to 70% were primary prevention. Prevention of patients who did not have established cardiovascular disease, reflective of what we see in our daily practice. We don't do angiography for all patients that come in our clinic. We may do an ECG to the higher extent, but we do not, we do, don't do a treadmill. That is what is reflective of our population that we have. And Pioneer 6 also had a higher proportion of established cardiovascular disease on oral semaglutide, which is 85% and 50% on secondary prevention. But it does not have any proven cardiovascular benefit. So that's kind of out of the discussion when it comes to myself and I'm talking about myself that I'm there. Now we talk about male and female equality, but if you look at the data with a male and female equality, only dulaglutide comes very close to a good male and female proportion with a 46% of female population, rest around 30% or 35% of female population. And if you look at any data which has a longer time of follow-up, we'll have less bias, we'll have less confounding bias, and that dulaglutide has slightly higher uh, duration of data with 5.4 years as compared to LIDA with 3.8 years and as compared to Pioneer with 1.3 years. If you look at HbA1c, it was a shorter HbA1c, so 7.3. So despite a narrower HbA1c, closer to what we are aiming target, it still showed cardiovascular benefits. So there's something more rather than the uh, ones which had higher HbA1c that was there. So this is more reflective of what we do. So if I am going to go to a, to a uh, market today and I need a shirt, I'm going to buy a shirt just because the sale is going on, I will not buy a trousers. I'll have to buy what I need. I'll have to take what is reflective of me today if that is the outcome that we are aiming to achieve for our patients. As I said once weekly, uh, relative risk by 12%, despite patients not having majority of cardiovascular disease, and it was risk reduction was 0.88 that was there. There were lower incidence of side effects with once weekly dulaglutide, and there were unexpected grounds, but some improvement in LDL cholesterol and systolic blood pressure that were there. If we compare this, this uh, subject, this uh, study, small study shows, if you're gonna compare injectable dulaglutide with lulaglutide, give it to the patient, asking what are you going to prefer, it's a modern generation GLP-1 pen, definitely because the needle is not shown. I would like to prick myself once a week, not daily. So more people were more acceptable uh, towards it that then they were there with the other one. I think I'm not gonna dwell on this, I dwell on it a little more, but what I'm trying to say is that let us stop deciding for our patient. Let us, let the patient in front of us decide what is better for him. Our job is to tell him the facts. Our job is this is what you have, this is what the data is, this is the price of the medication, this is the study population which is reflective in your case, and then let him decide what he wants to do rather than we kind of go around prescribing for our patients that are there. Because when I'm sitting in an endocrine clinic, I'm not curating the patient, I'm not curing the patient. I'm there to support the patient, I'm there to prevent complications to the patient, I'm there to get him a quality of life that he or she deserves in a non-diabetic. That is the goal of my treatment that is there. And so it's very clear that that is what we should embark upon. 
when we talked about GLP-1, the most common answer that I get is that it's still very expensive. And yes, it is expensive. I think if I say it's not expensive, who am I fooling? It is expensive. So good things are expensive. You know, there is no doubt about it. You, you, uh, there is, if there is, if you're going to buy something and there are benefits, there are long-term benefits to it, the cost is often offsided by the long-term gains that are there. Because the drivers of any disease or cost is loss of income, complications, ambulance admissions, and the bulk of it is uh, given by the hospitalization and the medication to treat complications. The only way you can save money is improving quality of life. Because no medication saves lives, it just delays death. And the only way to save money is spend less time in hospital, spend more time at work paying tax, or simply dying. And this is a simulation model using UK PDS, which suggested that if we are on a cost of treating diabetes without hypos or weight gain, the society eventually profits on the investment that has been there. With that, I would say we have moved beyond. You know, when we, we were talking in Mahabharat, Arjun was asked to just look at the eye. We no, we no longer look at the eye. We look at the eye, but we look at the whole bird as well. So we want glucocentric but we want everything else to be there as well, cardioprotective, weight reduction, everything there. And that is what has been now the new mantra of the fight against diabetes. And GLP-1 receptor is kind of ticks the box to prevent complications. With that, I thank you very much. Thank the chair for the patient. Thank you so much.